Three men and a woman have been found not guilty of criminal damage after toppling the statue of the slave trader, Edward Colston, during a Black Lives Matter protest in Bristol, an act of public dissent that reverberated around the world. Rian Graham, 30, Milo Pornsford, 26, and Sage Willoughby, 22, were accused, with others unknown, of helping to tie ropes around the statue's neck and joining with others to pull it to the ground. Jake Skews, 33, was accused of helping to roll it to Bristol Harbour where it was thrown into the River Avon. In a 10-day trial at Bristol Crown Court, the four defendants did not contest their actions on 7 June 2020 but sought to argue they were justified because the statue was so offensive. Giving evidence in their own defense, each described being motivated out of sincere anti-racist conviction, frustration that previous attempts to persuade the council to remove the statue had failed, and a belief that the statue was so offensive it constituted an indecent display or a hate crime. The prosecution, however, argued that the fact Colston was a slave trader was wholly irrelevant. William Hughes QC, for the Crown, said the case was about cold hard facts and the rule of law. The prosecution showed jurors a CCTV video compilation capturing each of the four defendants playing roles in toppling Colston. Bristol Council's head of culture, John Finch, gave evidence of the damage caused to the statue, which lost a cane and part of a coattail. He confirmed £350 damage to the harbour railings and £2,400 damage to the pavement. The Colston statue was approved by the council in 1895, and it had not given permission to anyone to alter, damage, or remove the statue on 7 June, the trial heard. But Liam Walker QC, representing Willoughby, said, each of these defendants were on the right side of history, and I submit, they were also on the right side of the law. Colston's deeds may be historical, but the continued veneration of him in this city was not. The continued veneration of him in a vibrant multicultural city was an act of abuse. Willoughby, who climbed the statue, told the court he targeted Colston because he was a racist and a slave trader who murdered thousands and enslaved even more. I thought that a statue that celebrates a figure such as Colston was disgraceful and offensive to the people of Bristol, Pornsford told jurors. Graham, who also brought rope, said she acted out of allyship and solidarity with people of color. Skews admitted helping roll Colston to Perrow's Bridge, named for an enslaved man who lived in Bristol, where it was thrown into the water, sentencing Colston to death. I knew I was in the right. I knew everyone wanted it down, he said. I knew Bristol wanted it. Everyone wanted the same thing. Judge Peter Blair QC, the recorder of Bristol, allowed expert evidence from David Olasoga despite past comments by the historian and broadcaster that he desperately wanted to join protesters that day, which were raised as a sign of potential bias by the prosecution. Olasoga described to the court the horrors of the slave trade, from rape rooms in Slava fortresses on the African coast to grotesque punishments meted out to rebellious slaves. Colston was chief executive officer of a company that branded children as young as nine, and which was eventually responsible for enslaving more Africans than any other in British history, Olasoga said. The court heard from black Bristolians including a former Lord Mayor of the city, Cleo Lake, who had removed a portrait of Colston from her office. He was the person responsible for brutalizing my ancestors, taking away their humanity, and for me and my community experiencing the harm they still experience today," Lake said. The four defendants laughed with relief as the verdicts were returned and hugged the many supporters that were waiting outside of court when they were released from the dock.